Lord, so glad that people join with us today. Let's go in prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank Lord for our salvation through Jesus Christ. You saved us, delivered us, redeemed us, gave us everlasting, eternal, abundant life. We thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's open our Bibles here to 3 John, our happy verse. And verse 2 says here, Beloved, that's you and I as believers. Once we receive Jesus Christ, Lord, we're in God's beloved. And the scripture says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. He was our soul prosperous. That belongs to all of us as believers, just like John 3, 16 is for everyone in the world to receive Jesus Christ, Lord. The same writer by the same Holy Spirit wrote John 3, 16 as the one that wrote 3 John verse 2 inspired by the Holy Spirit. And we get, when we get that settled, I mean, when it comes to preaching the salvation message, we want everyone to receive Jesus Christ, Lord. When it comes to building up the body of Christ, we want every believer to learn what Jesus did for them and receive all the benefits that belong to us in Christ Jesus. Now, we have a choice when we hear God's word taught, just like we have a choice when it comes to salvation. We can receive Jesus, Lord, or put, put it off. Well, we don't want anybody putting that off. We want everybody, as soon as they can, to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. The same goes true when it comes to the benefits that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. They're called exceedingly great and precious promises. Now, over here in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, now the scripture says here, uh, we'll start here in verse 54. Went to talk about Jesus. When he was come down in his, in his own country, he taught them in synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and he mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? The mother is, 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 is not his mother called Mary? And his brother James and Joseph and Simon and Judas are not his sisters? They are all here with us? Whence then this man these things? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said he prophesied not without honor, but save his own country among his own house. And he could there do no mighty work. Now notice this. He could there because of their unbelief. Now all of us have a choice when we hear the salvation plan that Jesus died for us to receive Jesus Christ, Lord. And as believers of the church, we want to get that gospel message out to all the world. That's our responsibility. Priority number one is reach the loss for Jesus. But God wants his church, the body of Christ, each believer to be built up. Now, here Jesus comes in his own hometown. This is also recorded in Mark chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. And he could there do the mighty works because of their unbelief. They're, they're so hung up on that, you know, we know where he came from. But they don't realize one day he became anointed by the Holy Spirit. And they're not receiving the message he's given. And he wanted these people to receive. He wanted them to receive healing. He wanted them to receive whatever they needed. And these are people that could have got healed, would have got healed, should have got healed or delivered. But they chose not to believe him. So what did Jesus do? Well, Mark's account said he went around teaching his word. See, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, we got all of us have loved ones, family members, whoever, people we know, co-workers. We're praying for them to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. But also we're praying for the body of Christ to receive all that Jesus did. And God wishes above all things that we prosper. And being held, he's a soul prosperous. That's God's will for each and every believer to know that our Father God is good. And Jesus come to introduce the Father God. He said, God is good. And every good gift and every perfect gift come down to the Father of lights in James chapter 1, verse 17. And it's how a person sees God. If they have that religious idea that God is hard and stern and strict, they'll be like the prodigal son's older brother. Who just thought, you know, I've been with this all the time. I've been working the fields. You never threw a party for me. And his dad told him, son, all that I have is thine. He could have had all this all along. But notice he's bitter. He's upset because he don't have these things. And these people got offended at what Jesus said. No, don't be offended at 3 John verse 2. Embrace it. Thinking, no, this is what God wants me to have in life. He wants me to be prosperous. He doesn't want your life struggling. He doesn't want anybody to struggle about anything. These blessings are for everyone. God reigns on the just and unjust alike. And Jesus said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The works that Jesus did was the Father in him doing the works. And Jesus never did disqualify anybody receiving from the Father. He would tell people, you know, according to your faith, be it unto you. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And all of us as believers, we need to listen to God's word be taught so we can get built up. Learn, learn how to apply God's word to life. Learn how to accept God's word as God's will for our life. And taking those new covenant benefits and blessings that belong to us and renew our mind to God's word. They're called exceedingly great and precious promises. That by these we might be partakers, but divine nature having escaped the corruption of this world through lust. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Well, we need to learn what Jesus did for us. And that's so important. We need to learn that we're the righteous of God in Christ. 
that we're complete, that we're sanctified. We've been made saints. We're ambassadors. We're priests. We're reign in life as kings in this life. Not over people, but over circumstances. The whole world needs the body of Christ to constantly decree and declare what the word says. Our country desperately needs it because they're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of man. And what we want to do is always speak God's word, speaking blessings, calling things blessed instead of cursing them, calling things blessed in Jesus' name, saying words of blessings, because we will have what we say. And things have to respond to our words. We can talk negative, talk the curse, or we could talk the blessing, talk positive, speaking God's word. And as believers, we need to rise to the occasion and use our authority in Jesus' name. Jesus gave us his name, and his name's above every name. Like Philippians chapter 2 says in verse 9 through verse 11, Wherefore God has highly exalted him, talking about Jesus, highly exalted, and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, things on earth, and things on earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's what we should do as believers, is always confess the name of Jesus, blessing things, calling things blessed in our own household, but our own nation. God bless America in Jesus' name. And creating and declaring always what God's word says. We're saying what our covenant says. This is kind of what David did. He underneath the old covenant. When he came against Goliath, he began to, David began to decree his covenant. Now his brothers had the same covenant. King Saul had the same covenant. But they're not talking the way David talked. In fact, David's brothers criticized him, persecuted him, because he talked this way. We know your pride, notice your heart. Look how they're talking. And so often, you know, fellow believers may not understand what you're saying when you call those things that be not as though they were. Like some people say, oh, I've never said I was healed if, you know, if, I, if I had symptoms of sickness. No, we want to say the word, the word is truth. Jesus said, thy word is true. The sickness is a lie. And we've been redeemed from as long and everything else. We've been redeemed from poverty and lack. And God made us a blessing. <clears throat> he blessed us, and so we can be a blessing. And we need to bless things. Call it blessed. Call it prosperous. Call it healed. Call it whole. And decree and declare always what God's word says. And, you know. With this third John verse two, the Lord said, you're so plain. I wish above all things you're prosperous. Think of all the things he could have said. He could have wound up these epistle letters by saying, I wish you'd just try to be a good Christian. Do the best you can. Keep a stiff upper lip. Just do what you can. It is what it is. He could have talked that way, but he didn't. He said, I wished above all things. I wish above all things that you're prosper. That means financially. And being helped, that means physically. Even your soul prospers. That's your mind, your emotions, intellect. Everybody needs that. Everybody needs to know it's in the body of Christ. I have the mind of Christ in Jesus' name. I have a sound mind in Jesus' name. And then decree and declare, the peace of God, Pastor, understand, keeps my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And by thanking God and praising God for what our covenant says, for what these promises say, is one way we give glory unto God. And we need to always, as believers, be thankful for what we do have, and be thankful for what we believe we receive by faith, and be thankful for what Jesus did for us. Through his crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. He made us new creatures in Christ. He made us the righteousness of God in Christ. He justified us, the Bible says in Romans 5, verse 19. Think about this. He did all this for us, and he made us kings and priests. And we need to act that way and talk that way and see ourselves that way. You know, when you think about yourself, how do you think about yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself ruling and reigning in Christ Jesus? Do you talk about those good things you've got in you? Like Philemon said in verse 6, no. So often people talk in the natural. They talk about what they don't have what, and how bad things are. No, we need to always monitor our mouth. And we'll be tempted to talk doubt and unbelief. But no, we want to always decree and declare what God's word says. And be thankful. Thanking God. Well, it comes the prayer of faith. Thanking God, I believed I received because I prayed. Father God, I want to thank you. Jesus said, therefore, I say to you, what things service are. When you pray, believe you receive them. I prayed, and I believe I received it, Father, and I thank you, Lord, for it. Let our requests be made known with thanksgiving. And always decree and declare. This is what God's word says. And begin to see yourselves the way God's word says. So when you think about yourself, how do you think about yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as healed and delivered and redeemed? Or do you see yourself some other way? When you think of yourself, how do you think of yourself? We need to always remind ourselves, this is what God's word says. He says, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. He says, I'm complete. He says, I'm sanctified. He says, I'm forgiven. He says, I'm cleansed. He says, I'm a priest. He says, I'm ambassador. He says, I'm a believer. He says, I'm justified. He says, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. That's how we just constantly praise God. Father God, I want to thank you. 
and release, re, uh, uh, resist all the other stuff that will come to us by saying, no, I refuse to think that way. And knowing that God wants me to prosper and be in health in Jesus' name. And just continually thank God. Thank God for your hundredfold return every day. Father God, I want to thank you for my hundredfold return manifesting every day. I thank you, Father God, I have wealth and riches in my house in Jesus' name. I just want to praise and thank you, Father. I've given, Lord, and you said it be given unto me. And I thank you, men, given in my bosom in Jesus' name. That I have favor with God and man. I'm highly favored. You know, grace and favor are the same words. And we need to see ourselves. That everywhere we go, we have favor in Jesus' name. The things just turn out for our good, for our way, of what we like, in the name of Jesus. And begin to decree and declare. I remember one time when I was in New Haven in a hotel preaching, there was a lady sitting in the front row. And I'm, as I'm ministering, teaching them, you know, the blessings of God. I noticed this lady had a ring on every finger, all four fingers, and all, all four fingers on the hand. And so I've been preaching about scripture like Mark eleven twenty four. 24. He said, therefore, I say to you, what things are bizarre when you pray? I believe you see them, you shall have them. I don't know this woman. As far as I know, I never saw before. But she's on the front row sitting there with these, these rings on. And I said, I, sister, I, you probably asked God for those rings, didn't you? Oh, yeah. She perked up. And she began to talk about how God got her this ring, how God got her this ring, how God got her this ring. And my husband, I guess he wasn't known for getting stuff. My husband got me this one. And went on and on about that. Well, that's God's daughter. She's in the ring. She's got one on every finger. Now, some people think that's just too many rings. That's just too much. One's plenty. Well, if one's plenty for you, praise God. But don't be, you know, upset because someone else has got abundance of them. You see, like Jesus would say, corn your faith be unto you. Don't limit God. Believe God. If you're going to believe God, believe God big. Because he's big. He can meet any need. And we need to thank God for that. That all things are possible to believe. Keep your believer going. Keep that expectation going. Keep thanking God consistently, constantly for my hundredfold return, like in Mark 10, 29, 30. And keep that expectation. You know, it adds life to you when you're always expecting. You're always expecting something good. You may have a friend that's always expecting bad. No, we're always expecting good. We're expecting these promises to materialize. We talk that way. We act that way. We see ourselves that way. We think our day that way. And we need to always, always feed that expectation. That it, keep ourselves excited about God's promises. Keep ourselves excited. That helps us to overcome all the problems that's in life, all the things we're going through, experiencing, whatever. When we focus, and I want to thank you, Jesus, that I'm prosperous because your word says I am. And I want to thank you, Jesus. I believe I received my healing. I just want to thank you for it because your word says himself took my infirmities and bear my sickness by his stripes I'm healed. But then you watch the believer that chose not to believe God's promises. It's just like there's always a catch to them. They, well, I mean, if that was true, everybody would have it. Well, Jesus is true. I mean, what's more true than Jesus? Does everybody have him? <laughs> there's probably 7 billion people on the planet that don't have him yet. Well, does that mean it's not true? It's not for everyone? Of course it's for everyone. Well, we want to go by God's promises and keep ourselves excited about them. And just keep, how can we do that? By stirring ourselves up, by making ourselves be thankful and be grateful and not murmur and complain. Not look for the faults. Look for the good stuff. Talk about the good stuff. Don't talk about the bad stuff. Talk to the bad stuff. Tell it to go in Jesus' name. And just continually thank God every day. Father God, I want to thank you for my 104 returns manifest today in Jesus' name. And I'm a giver. And Jesus said, give in Luke 630. And I thank you, Father God. The gifts are coming back to me. I mean, it's one thing to plant a seed. We all know about planting. We also got to harvest and believe God for return. You know, as a kid growing up part of my life on a farm and working uh, these fields, well, we'd, in the spring we planted. But oh, and then harvest is going to come in. And we had to work hard to harvest. It was like harder work than planting the seeds was harvest, out there harvesting the fruit that would come in. As believers, we want to not only plant our seeds, we know to do that. We know to tithe and give and be a blessing to people. We also need to harvest that. We're going to do that by praising God and thanking God for my harvest. It's manifesting every day. Keep that enthusiasm, excitement. It just spreads other people, but also keeps you cheerful in the face of all opposition. Take advantage of it. Hey, we got a New England camp meeting come up this summer, August the 14th through the 20th. So it's be downtown Springfield, Massachusetts, the Sheridan Hotel. Why don't you see by getting a room, staying there uh, throughout the week or a few nights anyway. And make a plan. Take your vacation days and come and be with us if you'd like to. Also, if you're not receiving a newsletter, we'll send it out to you. You can write me for all the materials that we have. We'll send them out to you. 
our newsletter, our prayer sheets, and things like that by writing Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 23, 7170, New York, New York, 1003. Say, Brother Rich, I'd like for you to agree with me in prayer about something, or I'd like to get your newsletter, or give me some more information. Check out our website at jesserichministries.com. Take advantage of it. And I want to encourage you. You keep thanking God that you're blessed. And keep taking 3 John verse 2 and keep quoting it to yourself. Constantly praising God that you're prosperous, you're healthy, and living in victory, and you have a sound mind in Jesus' name. Hey, till next time, it's Brother Rich Mind. We love you, praying for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.